start time, some music, and then I'll do a little head bob. Well, I guess we're on now. So yeah. hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Uh, good evening for some, actually. So uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, my name is Harlem Knight. This is The Journey, The Journey to Knighthood, The Journey to Better Chess. Um, and the subtitle um, is We're Making a Head Stop. So, uh, I appreciate Making a Head Stop. I mean, um, you got to make a head stop somewhere, this is the but this journey, is probably not the somewhere you want to be. The Journey to Better Chess. Hold on a second. Um, and I, the subtitle I, is There we go. Sorry about that. I, I like to speak and I, I repeated everything I said. <laughs> no, I had the, I had the uh, Chess TV volume on, so uh, I'm sorry that I missed what you said. Oh, that, that's a good thing. I said that we have to make a pit stop somewhere, right? Everyone's got to stop on their journey, and you probably made a mistake stopping with me. I'm just going to throw that no, out. No, 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 I doubt it. But we'll see, right? We, we'll see. Yeah. I doubt it, but we'll see. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't doubt it. That's why I said it. But you awesome. know what? You, I'll, I'll try to be more optimistic as this uh, gets underway here. Awesome. So what do we have planned today? We, we're going to do some, uh, I guess, live analysis of the the uh, what's going on again? The London. What's the name? Of it? I keep messing yeah, up. Yeah, the name. London Chess Classic is part All of the right. Grand Chess Tour. Nice. Now, how so, often does that thing? I mean, how how does that? How big of a deal is that? Well, so the Grand Chess Tour works. They have um, several rapid and blitz events. So they have the in Paris and in Belgium. They have the uh, rapid and blitz event in St. Louis. They right. have um, the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz, and then the Singfield Cup, which is the only classical time control event of the entire uh, chess tour so um the top four finishers from those stages end up qualifying for the grand chess tour finals and hikaru nakamura beat fabiano caruana in their semifinal matchup and maxime brachet legrave beat levana ronin in their semifinal matchup and that's why they're playing the finals and the constellation match right now so Go ahead. i guess i have a question for you shoot do you have a favorite chess player uh, you know, someone asked me this, I think about two streams ago, and okay. I kind of felt embarrassed because I really, at the moment, do not. And then I realized that I, not necessarily, I should have one, like, I, like, like I need to have one, but it's like, I think I should have one because it, it helps me gear my play or my thinking towards, you know, model it towards someone who, who's, who's obviously going to be a better player than I am. Right. I don't know. It, you know. it will help me learn. So I can't say... I can't say that I, that I do at the moment. I mean, I've watched, of course, I've watched the the Fabi and the Magnus Championship thanks to you know you and and freaking Danny and Aaron. Great job, by the way. Thank and, you. Um, I learned a lot, and it kind of confirmed that I need to f pick someone and follow and try to see if if I can relate to a certain style of play, and then just go at it. So, a long-winded answer to no, I do not. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I think actually it's important to keep your mind open when it comes to chess because I think sometimes people on their journey to getting better they get bogged down with a certain player a certain style and don't let themselves explore other oh, kind nice. of variations and other openings so I actually think it's not the worst thing I, I have many favorite players it's actually nice. a hard question to answer so I didn't mean to put you on the spot there oh good oh good um but chess yes. so let's talk a little bit about chess yes please and we're gonna get into some of the specifics here in these games because uh, these are very important games, and they're playing a classical time uh, control. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not so used to doing live commentary, but this is going to be fun. Not. It's going to be, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm very easygoing, as you can tell probably mm -hmm. by when I do commentary with Danny. I have to keep Danny sort of, you know, Give calm and yeah. focused because <laughs> yeah. uh, he likes to go off on hilarious tangents. But um, at the same time, I just love chess. I love helping people learn chess. So that's uh, why I do what I do. So can I take a quick moment? Yeah, absolutely. Take and, this is your show. All right. It's, you know, because I respect you, I have to do it respectfully. <laughs> so I just want to say thanks to everybody on Chess TV for stopping by. Thanks for, you know, everybody joining on Twitch. You've got Bishop in the Corner Pocket, Jay Brazil. Thanks for all the support on Twitch. Thinking Con Smith is on deck. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Um, Cracking Knight on Chess TV. Good, nice to see you. Bobby Fisher of Magnus. That's one of his favorite players, he says. Um, and he said, nice mug. So thank you. I appreciate you guys and your support. And it blows my mind every time you guys come back for more. You know, and I just, I just thank you so much. And um, hopefully you'll get as much as I'm going to get out of this show. So, <laughs> I yes, mean, honestly, continue. they'd be making a mistake not to come back. I've watched your show. I love the journey that you're taking. And you're only going to keep going upward. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, my pleasure. Man. Um, so no, you're right. You got to give everyone a shout out. I see some familiar faces in, in your, the Twitch chat here. Uh, Jay Brazel, as yeah. you mentioned, give him that shout out. And I see Aaron Hawaii. So of course, got to give Aaron a shout out. Mr. Producer. Yeah. The, the <laughs> boss. <laughs> a great community. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so let's see. All right, so we have the two games here. Let's start it with the Hikaru game versus Maxime because okay. that's the game for the championship. Right? The winner of, of this match, uh, so they play two games in Classical, and they also play two games in Rapid and four games in Blitz. So it's sort of a championship of all different time segments. I know in the World Championship, people were upset that Fabiano Caruana lost in mm. the Quick Time Patrol, right, in the Rapid. Right. But this Grand Chess Tour actually takes all of those into account. So, it, you know, the winner should be, by all measures, the best player in all formats. Granted, Magnus Carlsen's not playing, so we'll have to put that aside for the moment. But uh, between Maxime Bashe, Legrave, and Nikar Nakamura, both of them are elite in every single time control. One moment. I got to do one of the... Thank you, Aaron Hawaii, for the 100 biddies. And it's going to charity. Thank you so much. So for those who don't know, during the... Let me see. If you hit uh, exclam charity in the chat, Get the details about what Twitch is doing right now, as far as what they're doing, as far as donating to a direct relief. They're doing 20% out of every 100 bits out of their own pockets. They're donating to direct relief. So um, I appreciate the 100 bits, but I mostly appreciate the fact that you guys are helping those in need with that donation. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, that's I, I love that Twitch is doing the charity yes. um, donations here, especially because you know not. It, every, there's so many people in need, and it's always a great to uh, help with that kind of relief. Yes. Thank you. All right, so um, we're going into which game again, you said? Uh, let's start with the Nakamura game against Maxime uh, vachel Legrave. All right, so what I have here, it looks like I have the, the Fabi game on. Okay. This so do you want, do you want, would you rather start there? This is, like I said, your show. You tell me, Big yeah, Well, I mean, I, I want to keep with the flow if you want to explain, but I guess we, so if we have the board up, let's go here. All right, so let's go the there up. for sure. All right. Um, so we're stopping, or starting, I should say, not stopping, at this game between Fabiana Caruana and Levon Aronian. And this game is actually live. So this is going on right now. And for, so the first thing I always do, Luis, is I want you to tell me about the position. So what do you see? What do you like? What don't you like? Just let's talk about the position as it stands. And there are no stupid answers to this. I mean, I mean that seriously, because things that you may think are unimportant, Right. will end up being important. And so no, like no, not a single thing you see or mention is not worth mentioning, if that makes sense. Okay. So what do I see? Yes, what do you see? Well, right now I see that, that pawn on e4 is actually, is forking that pawn and that knight on f3. Yep. So he's pushing that, that pawn. So right now, if I'm looking at this and I'm playing white, I'm feeling a little harassed by that pawn. Okay. But of course, you got the queen on d6. Hold on a second. So let me see something here. Yep. I, I feel that the king on e1 is really, really open. That's just my okay. opinion. Right. So the king on e1, you, you generally like the castle, of course. Yes. So that king, king on safety. e1 feeling a little bit vulnerable. Yep. Yes. And uh, let's see. It's pretty much, I mean, that's pretty much all I can see. Like, I what I what I would want to do is take that pawn. So D D takes on E E four. Okay. Then let me see. I'm trying to. Hmm. See, I I feel like what's going on right now is you're in this mindset where I don't want to say the wrong thing. Am I right? Uh, kind of. But I'm saying it's like I I think right now it's like I'm seeing, I'm seeing things, but I'm not. Okay. Does that make sense? It's like I'm seeing things. I think I'm, I'm making myself see things that is not really there. That's fair. No, yeah. and the kind of the point of this is so you don't question yourself, right? Eventually, you, you get to this point where you know for certain exactly what you want to do. But when you're thrown into a position for the first time, as I'm throwing you in right now, I mean, it's totally cool not to know what to do. In fact, I'm not entirely certain what the right trajectory in this game is. Okay. And, you know... <laughs> I hope that you know makes it a little easier on you. And for everyone watching, this is our first time talking together, right? right like right. we we've chatted on Slack and just you know had minimal conversation. So it's sort of you know it, it's interesting for us because we're just throwing ourselves into this mix as well. So right. I, I'll start and I'll say okay. some of the things that I noticed. 
Uh, as you mentioned, this pawn on e4 is hitting um, the knight on f3 and the pawn on d3. Okay. By the same token, this pawn on b5 is attacking this knight on c6, right? Yes. So we have multiple knights under attack. So that means that white can even take this knight on um, c6 first, but I liked your inclination that you should probably take this pawn on e4 rather than knight on c6 because um, let's just actually take a peek. If you take on c6 and I take on f3, now the king is feeling very vulnerable, right? Because if this rook comes to the e8 square with check, right, that would force the king away from the center, which sounds like a good thing, except for the fact that you lose the right to castle, right? Right. So I like your first instinct in the given position because the last move was e4 by black. You know, it's not th this capture on c6 is probably the wrong one just because of the fact that your king will be caught in the center. And actually, let's show that out just to kind of emphasize this point. Let's say I take on f3 with a knight, and then rook e8 check comes. Right? If, even if I block with my bishop on e3, well, then I start capturing on the square, and at the end of it all, my rook lands on the e3 square, and your king still has to move. And so be, that... Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I was saying he won't be able to move. And on top of that, I mean, he also, like, for example, if the rook goes down to e3, you can capture with the pawn, but it starts destroying that structure for any possible king safety in the future. Exactly, right? So the king has to move, and you're losing one of your critical defenders. And if we just take this one step further, which I think is important, right? When we, we talk about chess, we're analyzing in our head. Right. And let's say king f2, it looks like, okay, maybe white is coming closer to coordinating the pieces. But then we see that a move like knight g4 check comes in, hitting the king and protecting the rook simultaneously, forcing the king back again. And then this pawn of c6 falls, and black is clearly the one with the momentum in the position, right? Give me one all? second. I'm a little distracted right now. Give me one second. I got to take care of something. Okay. No worries. And uh, one second. Apologize for that. You never owe me any apologize, just for the record. So you know, it's funny. Is... A good friend of mine, uh, he's telling me that like, you apologize too much. <laughs> you apologize way too much. It makes you just you know a nice person. I mean, it's not the worst thing to that. apologize. I feel like my mom always told me I didn't apologize enough. So, you know, it's... Uh, well, there we go. We got the nice little balance going. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, just let me know when you're all all good. It's just I'm having issues with the sound here. I want to make sure everything looks and sounds good. I just want to take a hot minute to do it. Yep, no worries. Um, if he must... So in the meantime, chat... You guys have a, a matter of fact, we're gonna have a poll coming out, and I don't know if you guys who know who Martin and Lewis is. They're one of the greatest <laughs> comedic duos out there, at least in my opinion. A little bit old school for some, but still. Take a moment if you don't know who they are, Google it, right? And um, we're gonna do a poll because I believe that Grandmaster Hess and freaking Danny Wrench are the Martin and Lewis of chess. Now, the question is, who's who? So stand by, stand by for that. In the meantime, a, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's hilarious. That's <laughs> hilarious. I, I can't get over that as a poll. It's too funny. It's, it's, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's always been my mind, and today was the first time I actually shared it. There we go. There we go. I think I'm solving the issue here. Save that. You know, technical difficulty, difficulties is always a beast. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been on the uh, that side of things, having to fix those. But I just subbed your channel, by the way. So you did? I, yeah, I have get to use the night at, at emote, which I'm pumped about. And I got to do the whole... <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> hammer fist, hammer fist. Yeah, Thank I you so it. much for that. <laughs> my, my pleasure. <laughs> All um, right, so let's see. One more hot second, and we should be... Ah! Aha! You know, you know, in New York, there are no hot seconds right now. It's all cold seconds. You know, this is winter this is time. True. This is the East Coast. I wish it was hot seconds, but there's one thing about New York that I don't think many people know that it's very windy. The city. Yep. Especially when you go into, let me see. It's not the avenues. When, as you are, when you're crossing the streets. Yep. You get blasted by the wind along the. It's just amazing. Anyway, not many people know that they say Chicago is the windy city. Yeah, that, you know, it's all those tall buildings that you make it kind of tunnel, the wind tunnels. Just, yep. it gets brutal. But I'm not one to complain. Okay, uh, so I think 
think I think we have a success. We got a success? Just one more mod and save, and we should be good. Don't worry. I'll just spam out some some <laughs> Harlem emotes here. Just get, get those nights Crazy. going. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get the chat riled up here. Okay, we should be good. Thank right. you so much for your patience, everyone. And to make it up, before the end of the show, I'm giving away a diamond membership. Oh. Com, just to make it up to you guys. I love it. So awesome. hopefully the, you know, they get their act together and win that diamond membership. Because right, they have, to be, they have to behave. Have to behave. <laughs> that's always the tough part. But yes. you know, I, I think we'll, we'll hold them together pretty well. They'll, they'll stay you know, focused and behaved here in the journey. <laughs> right. Hey, what's up, AB? Thanks for coming by. I appreciate you swinging by, as always. Thanks for the host, Aaron. And um, I got to take care of another. All right, there we go. All right, we're good. I think we're good. I think, there you go. See, I wasn't blowing up somebody's head with the loud, you know, notification there. So thank you for that. <laughs> All right, where were we? <laughs> we were chessing it. And... We were chessing it. All right, let's go. Yeah, of course. And um, a move is just actually played. And it's one we hadn't talked about yet but okay. one that i was going to bring up and that move is bishop to a3 here ah you're tickling the queen there exactly look at you using some danny wrench <laughs> language tickling the queen right i'll be queen watching is... some streams yo <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I'm, i don't know if this is a good thing or an absolutely terrible thing i feel like i've had enough danny no i'm just kidding oh, Danny. if you're watching i love you you know that um but Stay away um, from them chairs that like to slip. <laughs> that was a really funny clip. Yeah, it was. That was hilarious. <laughs> um, so it's so a bishop a3, right? So you're attacking the queen. Right. And behind it, you're attacking the rook on f8. So um, if you were faced with this position, which you are, now that I'm putting you on the spot, how do you reply to bishop to a3? Because your queen's under attack, as mentioned. Um, but if you move your queen, you might just lose that rook on f8. So what, what are your thoughts when you see a move like bishop a3 on the board? Bishop a3... I think I'm kind of screwed because I'm losing my rook. Right. So I'm thinking if I'm going to, like, this is what I think now. And it's probably something I need to improve later on. But if I'm, if I'm forced to lose something, I always try to find a way to lose it under my terms. Okay. Firstly, that's a great point, right? If you are forced to give up something, how right. to you know, allow your opponent to capture it, but do something to improve for yourself is important. Now, right. do you have to lose the rook? Or, you know, when your piece is under attack... Right. What, what are your options, right? You can capture that piece, but that's, t that's really bad here, of course, right? Because <laughs> the rook protects the bishop. Or you can move the piece, or a third option is block, right? So is there a way that you can uh, actually block the attack? Yes, yeah, so you got the bishop going to uh, c5. That's okay. one way, no? Yep. Then uh, let's see. Or the knight uh, going to b4. Okay. Both then, are options. Yep. Um, so there are more, obviously. <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to highlight every single move on the board, but you know, what for you, right? As you right. see this position. So what well, basically what I see right now is I see this, see yep. this, I see uh I mean I'm trying to see. I mean th those are really the only two ways to block it. Right. Now how about like, you know, instead of uh I think there's another way now I don't know if I see it yet, I haven't really looked for it, but it's like also through, through threatening, okay, can you yeah. also divert that attack? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what are, you said, one of the things that you mentioned, I think is a great, great point, honestly, like a really fantastic point. If you can lose material on your terms, sometimes it's very worth it. Right. Do you see a way for you to do that in this position so that you maybe give up some material but is advantageous for you? Lose material? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to lose those two in question, correct? No, you can. I'm not saying give up your queen necessarily, but you know you, we're talking about how the rook behind it was under attack as well. So, is there maybe a queen move that you think is um, at least gives Black some good play, despite the fact that you might lose this rook for a bishop or something like that? Hmm. Mm -hmm. You said a queen. So, mm, I don't see it. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. I mean, I guess when I when I look at this, right? You said, okay, my queen's under attack, my rook behind it. Like, let's say I made a move like queen to f4. Okay. Okay. And the point of queen f4 is well, I'm getting my queen out from under attack, 
but this bishop can still go ahead and capture my rook on f8, or that's still a possibility. Right. And we have an insane position where this knight is hanging, this bishop is hanging, this knight is hanging, and with all these pieces under attack, trying to calculate, you know, exactly the right way forward is never easy. Right. Right. So, to for starters, I say white is up a full rook. Right. That rook <laughs> is missing from f8. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, that, <laughs> that's not something we tend to like in right. being down a rook. But um, if we can get a counterattack quickly, then perhaps it's worth it. Now, what do I mean by a counterattack? Do I mean just going full on sacrifice and saying, well, let's, let's keep an attack going? Not necessarily. Because if I don't see a direct path towards checkmate or pr a promising attack, then I just kind of give up more material for no reason. Right? Gotcha. Right. I, I so, tend to do that a lot. I mean, honestly, I, <laughs> I still tend to do that as well. So you're not the only one here. Don't worry. And you know, if I saw a position like this, I would say, okay, knight g4 check. Where does this king go? If I go to f1, what happens? F1. You have... Well, you, you lose that knight, don't you? Yeah, I could take that knight. Can, I, can you do anything else after king f1? King of one. What do you mean, me as white or as, as black? Man, as With black. A, yeah, as a response. Um, yes, you can. You can move the knight over. Here, let me show you on the arrows. I can do this. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. you go. Yep. So it's check again, one. and you're forking the queen and the knight. Exactly. And actually, the, the king and the queen. Exactly. So the reason why I didn't make the move king of one is because I wanted you to see it in your head. Right. That's gotcha. always. Is that yes. the hard part for you in chess? Like one of yes. the hardest things. Yes. And it's funny because uh, during um, and I know I frustrate the the viewers sometimes. But this is, a, this is a great uh, point to highlight here because every time when we do the daily puzzle, when we do tactics, you know, the first thing I say is do not give me the answers. Yeah. Do, not, you know, try, do your best to help me train my mind to see the board the right way, you know, how to attack the board, like, you know, checks, captures, and threats. That's the thing that we go through, CCT. Yep. You know, help me see what I need to see. As you were, help me see what I need to do before, you know, so I can figure it out as opposed to, you know, just give me the answer. So now, let's say I'm going to an OTB tournament, and what am I doing? I'm here expecting the answers to be thrown at me. Nope. With subconsciously, you know, but that's not going to work. That's not going to help me at all. Let me take a quick second just to address the, uh, the chat here. Okay. Uh, innovation. Let me see. Kraken Knight, by the way, I just want to say on Chess TV, thank you so much for your support, and thank you for uh, your, your activity in the club. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. We got Alien Walker. Thank you for joining the Twitch chat. Jay Brazil. Says great point, Harlem Knight, making us proud, yo. I don't know what point that was, but I'm I'm happy that I made you guys proud. <laughs> Let's see what else we got going on here. We got A B, you got Brazil popping the bagel emotes. I just want to say once again, thanks you guys. So feel free to ask any questions. Feel free to say anything within means within within those boundaries. You know, keep it clean now. <laughs> but uh oh, so real lightning McQueen says CCC or Never mind. CCT is what I was saying. is checks, captures, and threats. Yep. So that was one of the things that the, the chat has helped devise for me. To always keep in mind whenever I'm looking at a puzzle or not. So I'm looking for checks, captures, and threats. So. Bert Trout! God! <clears throat> <laughs> you this have, is you hard. Have, you have tons of fans in here, man. This is uh, a... <laughs> it's a, it's a great a community. Stream. Oh, thank you. Great community. <laughs> Bert Trout, responsible for the chess. It's hard mug here. One of my favorite mugs. Give him a follow. I got to give him. So there you go. And by the way, GM has also has his own Twitch stream. Just give him a follow as well. Check him out whenever it decides to come up and it's not coming up. Eventually it will. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just give him a follow. Check him out. It's great stuff. I think the other day he did. And I thought I lowered that. But uh, <laughs> he, the other day he did. You did Stockfish and Alpha. Was it? Um, yeah, Alpha Zero. And, Alpha yeah, Zero exactly. Stockfish. That was interesting. I learned. Some things that I, 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 I got to honestly say that I could not um, retain, but it was interesting <laughs> looking at uh, looking at how the engine looks at it as opposed to um, how a normal person, like human, would look at yeah. it and approach something. And I guess you're you know at the point where you aren't using chess engines frequently or maybe at all. So it's probably a new look for you just to see just how crazy, like impressive chess engines are at this point in uh, society. I mean, just, what? They're so good. They're good, but the thing is, it's like um, one thing that I don't like about them is their lack of creativity. Interesting. Because uh, um, the other day, I was playing a game against Brooklyn Ra, 
the daily game. Okay. And um, I it's something's like you know what if I do this and then you know I can start working this. Or, I mean I'm sure that the, uh, the the engine sees the lines, but I don't know. It's just you can't. I don't I don't know how to explain it. You know I felt like I I, I was trying to do something and I'm sure that I threw him off a little bit by the move I made because it's something that didn't make sense. Yeah. That, that defied that, logic. <laughs> yeah, I think there is something kind of in many ways beautiful about uh, maybe subjectivity in a sense, right? Like art, right? Art is often very subjective and we appreciate it in our own ways. And, you know, with elite level chess, they don't make mistakes. And some people see that as a bit of a drier style, which I can definitely understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's you know, a typical argument, like, do we want to see perfection or do we want to see like decisions? Do we want to see them right. draw every single game because they're playing so well? Or do we just want to see people make mistakes and blunder? Right. I mean, that's, you know, some people just love the, seeing wins and losses. It's really up to the, the individual. But yeah, it, it is very different for sure. Seeing, you know, two human players slug it out versus seeing uh, the engines go at it. Yeah, this is quite a few players that I play and um, I actually feel like, and it's going to sound weird, so bear with me, uh, like we're dancing or we're fighting. We're doing kind of like Tai Chi with each other, you know, just kind of like, you yep. know, bobbing with shadow boxing. You know, we actually feel like we're our minds and not to get all whatever, but our souls are just at it, you know, figuring things out how to just on the board. That's how I feel. And you can tell that I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not a GM or anything like that, but you can tell when someone's just just copying a script, just doing a script as opposed to, you know, playing, trying to figure it out. You're, you're in their head. I'm totally with you. Yeah. I, so. I mean, I'm there with you. And I think that, you know, the thing about chess that's so uh, tough, but also so important is the individual responsibility, right? Unlike in basketball, and I'm a huge sports fan, right. but unlike in basketball, for example, you got teammates. So if you lose uh, a game, it's all your fault. In chess, it's only your fault. But on the flip side, when you win a game, there's like nothing like that feeling of winning a good game because you know that you did everything. Like you overcame the person sitting right in front of you or, you know, that you're playing against. So it's just such a great feeling to win chess games, just like it's such a terrible feeling sometimes to lose them. Oh, yes. But. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it, though. Losing is learning. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very true. Losing is learning. And, um, you know, speaking of learning, it looks like in this game here, Levon Aronian with the black piece is still thinking. So you know how oh, nice. some, you know how sometimes it feels rough when you see a position you don't know what to do, right? Like that yes. doesn't feel good. But at the same time, you see that someone like Levon Aronian, one of the best players in the world, mm -hmm. is sitting there thinking of this position. It makes you feel a little bit better. At least for me, it does. Right. That like, you know, I don't see things as quickly as these guys, but they also take some time every now and then to figure it out themselves. So that, right. that is definitely reassuring. Um, There's one but, thing about the, uh, uh, about the CC, the WCC. Yep. Just to, there's one thing that I got out. That's my first one, you know, since really committing myself to learning more about chess. And the one thing that really got me was how um, how human uh, the players were. Yeah. I mean, it, of course, they had their prep. They did their thing. But then there were times where they had to make decisions. Should I make this move or should I? I don't know. This is probably a controversial thing. But should I um, should I continue to draw at Classical so I can win over at, you know, so those those elements in there, it's, it's just very reassuring for me, you know, to know that um, the title players are not um, invincible. They're Make definitely sense? not. <laughs> I think you got to go give a quick shout out because I just I'm looking at the Twitch chat right now. You oh see my what goodness! Just happened there, Metal Eagle with the sub bomb. Hold on, say I gotta I gotta get ready for this. I gotta do the the Enter the Dragon slow mo. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Metal Eagle. Always, always with the support. And then I believe I have his info here. And of course, something's just not working with my stream lab. So forgive me, guys. Click on his name, Metal Eagle. Give him a follow. He is a national master, I believe. Check him out. He's always willing to teach. He's always He has great simuls. Great guy. Check him out. He's, he's a good friend of, of the community. So thank you so much for that, Metal Eagle. Thank you guys for the follows. Um... I'm having a hard time keeping up with it. So I appreciate it. Just remember, um, if I don't give you the gratitude, you know, just count it towards my head, not my heart. So <laughs> I appreciate you so much. All right. So you had asked a question about two hours ago about the position that we're looking at right now. 
I, you know, I ask questions. Sometimes they're not meant to be answered. Other times, <laughs> you know, I forget about them. I don't even remember what I asked. But, um, you know, I scrolled back here to after White's 12th move, Bishop A3. Right. Uh, because I was saying that Levon is still thinking after 12 Bishop A3. So um, he's trying to figure out what's going on here, just like we are. Right. So, it, I mean, yes. he's in the same boat as us. He doesn't have engine analysis. Um to go off of. This is all new territory for him. Otherwise, he'd be playing instantly. And when you're left to your own devices, sometimes it's just really difficult. Chess is a tough game. Yes. So, um, all right, let's try this. All right, I moved back in the game, but it doesn't appear that. Yeah, can you uh, also scroll okay. back with me? To the, the, can you still see my arrows and stuff? Is that... Yes, yes, I can. Okay, because I'm right. looking at the uh, on Twitch and it still shows the position after the. Yeah, took the book. on Twitch is a little delay, about 10 seconds maybe. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Just making sure we're on the same page here because yeah. I know that sometimes I uh, do a little bit too much. You know, I'm, I'm doing a little extra. If I, if the I'm monkey sorry. is not banging the symbols in this head. <laughs> At least not right now. No, <laughs> no, the monkeys will not be uh, <laughs> banging any symbols. So that was one of the best things I've ever seen. You don't yes. understand <laughs> how much RN, Danny, and I were just – absolutely dying of laughter <laughs> that, that, that was happened. great that that video is phenomenal um but yeah so in this position i mean just there's so much to calculate right we're talking about yeah. bishop c5 we were looking at briefly at queen f4 but we didn't we didn't really dive deeply but you know there is a clear concern about losing that rook on f8 right queen f4 is one of those moves that are double-edged like you know kind of what you were talking about instead of um just shoring everything up it's just going on the initiative and humans often they make mistakes when their yes. king feels under threat or they just have an unclear position with a, a double-edged dynamic. Right. So, you know, let's talk about bishop c5 first because I think that's the most natural reply in a sense because you're stopping an attack on your queen by challenging the bishop on a3. And if bishop c5 is played, I think first and foremost, white is forced to take this bishop right. because now there are two threats on the bishop on a3 which means that I'm, you're in danger of just losing that bishop. So you, you, know, you didn't put your bishop on a3 to lose it. So let's capture. All right. And I'm going to capture back. Otherwise, why did I just put my bishop on c5? <laughs> <laughs> and now the question becomes what to do about this dynamic we've been discussing, right? There's a knight on f3 hanging, but also you know, I could take on c6, but then I lose my knight on f3. And how do I feel about those type of exchanges? Right? That's a very important element in this position. What do you think? So it's our no, it's not our move yet, right? It's, it's, it's on it's, white. It's white's move. Okay, on white. I don't know. I think we're putting we're giving more of a threat by taking his his knight, but we lose the pawn though, right? So we got. I think. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know. I I just think, and this is just my initial thought that uh, our. The pawn on e4 is better suited staying right there at the moment. Okay. Because if we take, um, even though we're, we'll double up his pawns and break up his uh, pawn structure there, mm -hmm. um, I think we lose a threat there. Okay. So like if white were to move, right, and say, let's say white decided to take on c6. Okay. All right, so you lost a knight. Yes. So you're going to have to probably take this knight back, right? right? Otherwise, you're down material. So how do you – just let's stop here for a second. How do you evaluate that series of trades? Did white gain anything, or is black the one who gained you know, yeah. in this position? How right. would you evaluate it? I, I, definitely, um, I definitely believe black gained. Okay, and why? Because one, he opened up the e-file. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see uh, – Mm, open up the file. You still have the queen doing that number there. Yep. Uh, let's see. And of course, you got this. And also puts a threat here. Now, let's see. Even though you got the queen going there. Your, your arrow game is on point, by the way. Is, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> now, they only had arrows in tactics. Yeah, exactly. That's what I have I to say. Too. <laughs> but yeah, that, I think that's pretty much where I'm at at this very moment. That's not much as I can handle right now. 
<laughs> well, I, I will say actually that that was all great reasoning because I agree with you that black is the one who gains from this kind of exchange. Right. And that's always an essential thing to think about is let's say pieces are offered to be exchanged. Right. You really want to think about, does this favor me or does it favor my opponent? Okay. And I also a hundred percent agree with your reasoning. And the reason I'm belaboring these points is because as you continue to improve, this thought process will be second nature to you. You won't even be knowing why you're coming to the realization that this exchange is good for you. In this case, good for black. But what you just laid out is perfect, right? Let's say this happens. Immediately, I'm worried about my king safety. Right. I'm also worried that if I don't capture an F3, well, now this pawn takes in G2, and that's a big problem. So I would want to capture this pawn. But if I do capture it, no matter how I capture it, let's say with the queen, then you just throw in moves like, well, you can throw in a move like bishop G4. You can throw in rook E8 check. Black is getting this development and an initiative on that white king pretty much effortlessly. So now initiative... Can you define what initiative is, please? Absolutely. So, you know, when you're gaining in chess, when you're gaining the initiative, you're the one who's sort of, you're gaining the momentum in the position. And um, if we just go back to show this position here, it doesn't really look like mu that much is going on. And actually the, the best point would be to go back like somewhere like, like here. Okay. Right, very calm looking position. Doesn't look like too much is going on. But when you're the one who start creating threats in the position, that's how you seize the initiative, right? You're, you're doing things to challenge your opponent's setup and to make it difficult. And in fact, white is the one who gained it first because look at that expansion on the queen side, right? right? By going b4 and a4, if you give me one more move, I'm playing pawn a4 to a5 and trapping your bishop on b6. Mm -hmm. So those are some concrete threats. And that's exactly why black challenged with a5 and this, you know, playing for e4 in the center is you're sacrificing a pawn temporarily because I can just take this pawn. Um, but I, I'm sacrificing a pawn to free up squares and to make my pieces come alive. And the clearest example is if, let's say, I took on e4 here, then knight comes to e5, and I'm threatening this bishop on c4, which, which you don't want to give up because your knight is tied down both to this bishop and to this pawn on e4, right? Two can play this game. I can draw right. arrows as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know there's a clear problem here and if i continue capturing like we talked about how do trades help or hurt us right. well now this queen on e5 is well placed because i have two attacks on the pawn on e4 i have an attack on the pawn on c3 if you castle my queen also is aiming at the king side on the h2 square so all of a sudden this bishop is is freed up you know, we see a, many different aggressive plans for black whereas white despite being up the pawn doesn't have as clear of um, kind of an aggressive approach. So um, I think you touched on something that I, I believe I learned yesterday from Japanese tutor in our conversation. We just had a, a Discord conversation as far as uh, activity versus material. Okay. Yep. And you know, um, I'm at a point now in my game where I'm just focused now. Okay, I got to take, 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 take. He takes, I take. Okay, we're still even at this point, so we're taking, take, as opposed to, um, I guess, building up. Uh, uh, how do I say? Building up to a, just building up. That's all I can say right now. So, uh, like for example, like the pawn moving up, uh, yep. wasn't necessarily focusing on uh, taking specific pieces and whatnot. It was focusing on building up. In this case, initiative, taking the initiative back, if anything. Yeah. So it, it's not necessarily like I'm. That's what I'm focusing on. It's like okay, I gotta okay. One, I gotta go get the king. That's the main mission, right? Yep. But it's like um. When I'm there, I got to take as many of the officers out. That's how I see it from the Marine Corps mentality. I got to take the leadership out, right? Got to take yep. the leadership out. But as opposed to how do I get there, you know, I need to go make sure that, you know, the cameras are down before I sneak into the facility. I got to make sure <laughs> that the radios are scrambled, you know. So I, I got to build up to that to that point. And that's what I'm I'm starting to to get, you know, from from like – the the players out there in the chat and you just kind of uh confirm that through this and i hope that's that's the same thing that we're talking about here it absolutely is and actually okay. no clearer an example is it than this move pawn to e4 right right because you as you were just saying you're at the point where you're focusing on just making sure you're counting you know you're counting things right did i that trade was that an even trade did i make sure everything you know i traded a pawn for a pawn or you know two knights for a knight and bishop and things like that but if you look at this position right the lo logical move and I'll put that sort of in quotes because, you know, logic is different to everyone. But my knight's under attack, right? right? So my 
initial reaction is, well, if my knight's under attack, I should move my knight. Right. 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 And then the question becomes, where do I move this knight to? I can go knight e7, but the reason why black didn't choose a plan like this is, well, white wants to eventually castle, put pressure on this e5 pawn, maybe throw this bishop to a3, right? These are um, the various options that white wants to go forth with, and black is feeling a little bit more passive in a position like this, right? We're talking about the initiative. Black wants to play with full steam ahead, wants to make sure Mm -hmm. that... um, I'm just not being pushed back, and then white will have a strategic advantage. So that's the reason why um, black went for a pawn sacrifice like this is not because there's any direct checkmating ideas or nothing of that nature. Right. It's just more so to, to limit white's options. Because just to maybe further this point a little bit, let's say I went knight e7 instead of uh, e4. Then let's say I castle. You play a move like knight to g6, so that defends the pawn and gets your knight off the e-file. Maybe White will just continue with Queen to B3, saying, I'm spying on your F7 pawn. Right. And eventually, I would love to put my knight on G5, because that really piles up the pressure. And it's not a one-move tactic. Right? Sometimes we go for one-move tactics where knight G5 <laughs> attacks F7, but what knight G5 also does is reinforces the e- E4 square here. Ah. Right? I can then put a knight on E4 and trade and put a knight on this E4 square, which does a number of different things. Let's Continue this, and I'm sorry. You stop me at any moment, okay? Okay, Please. I'm gonna stop you right now, <laughs> because and and uh, I have to I have to give thanks because I'm so appreciative to all the viewers, you know, and in particular those who sub, you know, we we have quite a few subs, and unfortunately I can't list them all, but Metal Metal Eagle again, thank you so much. Japanese Tutor has sub, thank you so much. Uh, always with the support Japanese tutor and the wisdom Aaron Hawaii continually giving them charity bits thank you so much and I'm sure the people who are directly receiving those in direct relief that's funny um, really appreciate that as well Bert Trout with the 200 biddies thank you so much and uh, thank you for your stream he, he not only teaches chess you know he shows how to play chess whatnot, but he gives a history of it that's kind of cool you know of the, the past champions, um, how we came about to do certain things. It's just pretty awesome in his stream. So check him out. Um, and let me see. I'm just going to go through the Twitch chat just one more time. Make sure that um, Fur Chess, welcome back. I appreciate you swinging back around. Uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable how many people are out there showing the support. Thank you once again for swinging by. Um, uh, pretty soon we're going to have a poll. So stand by for that. And a story. So once uh, GM has dropped the knowledge on, the, look at look at that board. <laughs> look at that board. Once he dropped the, this this little nugget here, we're gonna do the poll, and then we're gonna continue on. And uh, just hopefully, you're enjoying the show as much as I am. So, oh, uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying the show probably more than you are. I'm having a good kick of this because awesome. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I'd probably still be sleeping and just wasting <laughs> away my Saturday. But instead, I'm up talking about chess, so I'm a happy camper here. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and I will finish off this thing, and then, yeah, I know you've got a good story to tell. And also, i got to give you a shout-out because you're so good at reading the chat and making sure that you give everyone the props that they deserve for tuning in and you know, helping with charity and also just learning chess. Right? That's what we all want is you know, we're a team of chess learners, not Indeed. just chess players. So, Thank you so much uh, for that. Of course. And so just yeah, to finish off the one point I was uh, going to make here, and I think it's important, right? We, as I was mentioning this battery on the F7 square, Normally, you want to challenge a bishop with another bishop, if possible. But if, if we play bishop e6, right, how do you evaluate that in this position, right? If I, I have two pieces hitting it. You have two pieces protecting it. But you'll end up with this pawn on e6, right? Right. And that's a pretty ugly pawn structure. Because when you get sort of double pawns like this, unless I take right away, I mean, I'll probably, let's trade queens first. But we get pawns like this. Why is this so bad? I mean... You know, honestly, I don't know. I know that it's bad. Kind of okay. like uh, a lot of the time people say knights on the rim are grim. Yep. I honestly do not know why. I just know that it is. So thank you for asking that question. And I'll give you the, I'll give you the answer. <laughs> All and right. th- the answer is actually sort of a friendly one. A pawn's best friend is another friend. And the reason why is if a pawn is protecting another pawn, a minor piece is not capturing it. Right? Ah, because no, I gotcha. it's more valuable. So here's the big problem is I can start piling up pressure on these pawns, right, with moves eventually like rook to e1 or knight to c4 and start hitting these pawns in the center. 
And that's why Del Ponts are typically so bad. And also in end games, if we can try to conceive of a position with all these pieces off, you can't create pass pawns when you have double pawns, right? If you think about it, the way to create a pass pawn is by pushing pawns together, right? Right. right? And you can't do that with double pawns. So that, I'm glad in, in a way that you asked the question because a lot of times people don't know something and I've, you know, worked with students and they, they, pretend like they know sort of or they yeah. uh, don't ask the question even though it's kind of festering and they want to ask it so i think it's very important always ask questions as i mentioned before there are no stupid suggestions there are mm -hmm. no stupid questions there are incorrect variations but that's not stupid that's right. just incorrect so and in, so i think sorry in, go ahead in, in saying that if there's anyone in chat because i happen to know quite a few of you we've talked off stream if there's anyone in chat who i know there are quite a few of the at my level or even lower who, you know, have, do you have any questions, please feel free to ask, you know, and I mean, now's the time, right? Now's the yep. time and we can address them. And if not, you know, we will get you an answer, you know, and, and that's the main reason why I started the stream was to develop a comfortable, non-judgmental, fun environment, you know, for, for all to come, but mostly, you know, from those at, at the lower level learning how to play chess so they can come in and not worry about, being laughed at, criticized negatively, you know, I'll take the hits. I'll take the hits and then we'll grow together. So thank you for that. That's what I want I, to say. That's my piece. You know, I, I <laughs> again, I, you know, this is very, we're, you got me in like my nicest mode ever. Cause when I'm with Danny, I'm <laughs> giving him some flack all the time, but no, I mean, this really is a testament to you because like I was saying, a lot of people are nervous to sort of have a reaction, right? Cause chess is a hard game. I don't think there's any point in denying that, but people, when they think it's hard, they don't ask the questions, right? right? If you had trouble in math in school, sometimes you're afraid to ask the questions because you don't want to quote unquote feel stupid. But that's not, I would never ever make somebody intentionally feel stupid about their chess because it's not about being smart or stupid, it's about right. learning. Exactly. And I see that in the chat, you know, um, I saw R in Hawaii was saying he didn't really know enough about that either and he loves it and, and that's the thing. Yes. You know, people don't know why certain things are good or bad. They just hear that it is good or bad, and they try to emulate it, but they don't right. know how. They don't know right. how to do it correctly. So, um, awesome. and there's a great point, actually, right there. I see by ev one pow one saying, a knight in the center can move to eight squares. A knight in the rim can only move to four squares. And a knight in the corner uh. is the worst, as it can only move to two. And that's something that I always tell people when, you know, if, if they're just Thank learning you. chess, that's one of the first things I say is, you know, we count... A knight on f6, it can go to d7, e8, g8, h5, oop, not g7, I cheated, oh. h7, <laughs> g4, d5, look at that, we just got oh. all the squares there. But if your knight's um, over here, for example, knight on g6 only has six squares. Right, because you lose, okay. You, you lose the i file that you don't get access to. <laughs> Did I do that right? One, two, and e5, okay, I'm missing one. Right. So six squares in total. So that's already a good example of why knights on the side of the board are worse than knights in the center. So these kind of things um, are important. That's why Fian Keto bishops, right? We talk about putting a bishop on the Fian Keto diagonal. So it is Fian Keto. It's yeah. not Fian Cheto. I, I get corrected I, all the time. <laughs> I say Fian Keto. So I would be able to say Fian Cheto. I, if there's an Italian person in the chat, please let us know because it's an Italian word. Um, but, well. <laughs> you know, the, the reason why the Fian Keto Cheto is <laughs> so good is that this diagonal has a full eight squares, right. whereas this diagonal has seven. And that's actually not as big of a deal, typically, because you tend not to fianchetto your bishops, but that just goes to show that they're just simply put more squares on that diagonal. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, and I'll make one final chess point before I really want you to get into your story, because I actually don't know what your story <laughs> it's is. It's not a big deal, but it's a story nonetheless. Okay. <laughs> and and, and I, I just want to talk about improving the pe uh, squares of your pieces. These knights okay. look like they're perfectly good, but I highlighted this e4 square, and I want to show why. Let's say I go bishop to d7, knight to g5, and so now I have a huge threat on f7, mm -hmm. so I should protect it. And let's say, well, tactically, I can already go bishop to a3, but I, don't, I wasn't going for the tactics. I was going for more the understanding of the position. Okay. A move like knight d to e4, yes, it frees up this bishop on this diagonal, but that's not really why it's so good. The, the reason why I like it so much is because it occupies the c5 square. And so now a move like bishop a3 will prevent black from blocking on that diagonal. So I've made a spatial grab. I've gained more space by moving my knight. My knight was on d2. My knight moved into the center with e4. And I also created direct threat by, by putting 
the pressure on the c5 square, I can go bishop a3 and prevent the block as we see saw in the game. Right. And once I get my bishop to a3, then the rook on f8 really is uh, a problem because you're going to lose it as you can't block. And just right. to show the, the essential difference is in the game, right, bishop a3, bishop c5 was the response we were talking about. And so it was actually um, played in the game. So it just goes to show some of these differences, how improving your pawns, uh, excuse me, your pawns, your pieces is how you go about that, how you think about it. And so now I'm, in the, I'm done talking. <laughs> it's time for you. Oh, by the way, you just got another uh, sub there, I see. Slow Bye. failure drill. Now, I got a <laughs> cool story about slow failure. Okay. Um, he was one of the early early guys from my stream a few months ago. And I believe, I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to do something that uh, Robert hates that I do. Just joking. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> But um, I believe you came back because it's been a while since you played chess. You came to the stream and, you know, you were interested, whatever. And then Arn Hawaii gifted you a diamond membership on my stream, which was pretty cool. So um, it's been a while since I've seen you. I hope everything's well. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you very much. Um, and again, before I get into the story, just let me give some, uh, some appreciation shout outs, if I can say that. Yep. Arn Hawaii is active in the stream. He's also helping out producing this as well thank you so much for that uh jackie the swede now robert remember when i was saying about dancing well yep i first experienced the dancing on chess with jackie the swede so every time you play is always like a a mental dance is what we say as, as, as opposed to a struggle or battle it's just like a dance i like that so that was pretty cool so let's see who else is out there fur chess is still out there alberto romera thank you so much for coming back again um crockerite Thanks again. Japanese Tutor is still doing this thing. Amber, I mean, we have a very, very active chat. And I just want to say thank you so much. Same thing with Chess TV. I didn't forget about you guys. Uh, FJAB14, you have a question for uh, for uh, GM Hess. I'm going to hold that. I'm going to say my story, and then we're going we're gonna to shoot that question across. Is that cool? All right. Yep. So as you may or may not know, GM Robert Hess is a very intelligent man. He, went, <laughs> he attended uh, Stuyvesant High School, which was a high school that – I don't know if you guys know, but in New York, it's really weird. At least the time, I don't know if it's still like that now, but when I was growing up in New York, the school system was weird. I mean, from junior high, as you were from elementary to junior high, and then junior high to high school, you actually went to a process where you would, um, you know, kind of like apply to different schools, try to get enrollments, take some tests. So it's kind of like you would when you would go to like a university or college, you go through that whole process, but at that level. So one of the schools I wanted to go to because I was, I was deep into the sciences, um, was Stuyvesant. So I was set. I was hyped. I was going to do it. My grades were were decent at the time, and we had to take the uh, the exam to get into the school. I don't know if it's like that now, but uh, yes. so I'm I'm set. You know, and our family is from the hood, East Harlem. You know, I'm going to be one of those stories that you know we get out of the hood and whatnot. You know, those those things like that. Anyway, so I'm going. I got. Uh, the last bit of change I got for um, to go to take the, the train down there, and I'm going down the staircase, and then all of a sudden, this dude robs me. He holds me up. You know, he sticks me up. He's like, give me your money, whatever the case may be. So I give him my money, and I'm totally, like, deflated. So I go upstairs, and I'm trying to scrounge around for some more money to go to take this exam, you know? He said, this is, like, a big step for me. I'm going to make it to a good school, get the, the proper education, and, you know, make it to, to do big things. So I go, and finally my mom scrounges some change just to get that token down to uh, to, uh, to Stuyvesant because it's pretty far from where we are. It's, it's really it's like downtown, way downtown. Yeah. Uh, so I made it, and I'm just so deflated. I go there, and I'm taking the exam, and I'm just like, screw this. Halfway through the exam, I literally just gave up and went down the exam and just hit C, 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 C. Just picked one answer, went through, blew it off. I never heard from that again. I was so deflated from that. Now, I know it's a sad story. <laughs> sad story. But um, I thought it was pretty cool <coughs> when I found out that you were from Stuyvesant because um, you did it. You know, you went in there and you freaking, you were already a, a chess hero by the time you were in there. And, and you know, oh. you did your thing. And it's cool because, you know, if I would have um, tough, tough, you know, toughed it out and just sucked it up and just freaking just went through it, you know, I I could have gone another path though. I'm, I thank God for the path I made it because I'm still here. I'm still here with the man, the myth, the legend, 
GM Robert Hess. And um, so the point of that story, I know it's weird, whatever the case would be, but it's like, no matter what your situation, you know, good or bad, you know, find out what you want to do. Find out and make sure that it's something that you want to do and you have fun doing it. And no matter what comes your way, freaking persevere through that trash and just, just keep going at it. Keep going at it. And I'm telling you, you're going to benefit from it. So taking that into chess, you know, chess is hard. Chess is really, really hard. And I, once I started with the stream, I was at what, 600 in okay. the rapid. And, you know, through all the frustrating moments, through all the, uh, the crazy moments and the community, I'm, I broke 800. Yes. So it was, it was just a weird story and it kind of came out weird now that I, I look back at it. But yeah. it was, that was my experience through to Stuyvesant. But, you know, I always wanted to go to Stuyvesant and to find out that you went there. It was pretty cool for me to know that you that you went there. Well, it's a little less cool now that I know that you didn't get there because <laughs> of those reasons, especially. I mean, that's, yeah, that's... That that's was terrible. on me, though. That was on me because I gave up. No, but, I mean, nobody deserves to have that kind of thing happen to them. So I also, you know, I feel for you, man. Don't, that's, uh, you know, you're still doing good things. So I'm glad that uh, you were able to bounce back. But that's, that's some tough stuff. I hate to hear that. So you know what? To cheer it up a bit, I'm going to do the poll right now. Okay. Does it sound good? Sounds good. And then we're going to get to a fab F jab. 14's question. F right, jab I'll, 14's I'll take a question. look at the question. Oh, All right. I see. You see it? I see the question. Yeah. So you do the poll. All right. I'm do the poll. Right. Bring it up here. All right. Here it is. All right, guys. Did come up. There it is. So now, the poll stays. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the poll? Yeah, the poll is hilarious. All right. Wrench it has is the Martin and Lewis of chess. Who's who? <laughs> So option one, Danny is definitely Lewis. What a spaz, right? Option two, Hess. Most deaf is Martin. He's too smooth, but can he sing? <laughs> option three, Danny must be Martin. Have you heard his, his pipes as Sasha? His pipes singing. Never mind. Anyway, uh, uh, you are crazy if you think that Hess is not Lewis. Look at his glasses. <laughs> All right, guys. So in the, in the Twitch chat, type one, two, three, or four. We'll leave it up there. Um, and... Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll leave it up there and see how it goes in a few minutes. We'll check it out, and then uh, we'll have fun with the answer. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's too funny. I can't get over that. I'm not going to vote, but I can't wait to see what the, the, the final tally is. But I'm going to hit up. I see the question that was asked there. Okay. F All right. 14. I have a question. How do I evaluate my pawn structure heading into the end game? Now, that is a question that doesn't have a set answer. And why I say that is because every position is different. So I don't want to give you a generic answer, but what I will do, and is if this is all right with you, let's, if we switch over to the Nakamura game against Vasche Legrave, I think that's actually an important example of pawn structure heading into the end game. So um, if we can go to that game, it will just show s something about pawn structure, not that I can tell you everything by one example. I guess okay. that's my essential point. Can you, can you share that game with me? Yeah, let me, let me do that real quick. Uh, doing that. Thank you, Sabalili. Saba. Thank you, Saba, for the follow. <laughs> All right, so I accept. And then let me. All right, so can you see that? Can you see the arrows? Yeah, I got it. I guess I see you. All right, cool. Everything's there. Right. And I, I thought this would be a good time to switch this game because we're heading towards an end game, right? Just I queen, see. rook, and minor piece each side. So wait, okay. Before you do that, what, yep. what, 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 I mean, when, how can you tell that you're in the end game or what constitutes an end game as opposed to you're still in the middle game or you're still opening? That's actually a great question. And I actually still am confused sometimes. <laughs> I swear. I mean, I, it sounds like a joke, but I sometimes don't really know how to classify certain types of positions. Because right now, there is no clear line. And I would say that the difference between an end game and a middle game is typically when the king is safe. That, like, there's no danger of getting checkmated. That's how you know you're really in the end game. Okay. Which is why I would consider this more of a middle game. Because, you know, just to draw some arrows, right? There's a, this check can come, and this rook uh. can come follow it up. And I can conceive of a way that that king gets in some danger. And same with this king here. Right, if this queen goes to h6 and somehow my rook gets to the e8 square, right, that could be a sort of checkmate. Um, unrealistic, but still something that you have to keep in the back of your head. Right. 
but I wish I had a more concrete definition for everybody of how you know when it is the end game versus the middle game. So I, I would say that's the terminology I often find is less important than the practical elements, if that makes sense. Gotcha. It does. Um, yeah. And it's a, that's a great question, though, by um, FJAP in the first place, 14, just asking about pawn structure. And this is why I wanted to highlight this position is I'm going to start with you. Tell me what you think about the pawn structure in this game. I think me or F Jab? You? <laughs> no, you. I'm just joking. <laughs> so uh, I think right now, as far as like in the white, I like his pawn structure. Okay. Um, and it's also giving a sense of because you got the the pawns. I don't know the correct term, but I'm just gonna say they're, they're linked up. So the pawn chain. It's pawn pawn chain. chain. There you go. It has a good pawn chain. It gives a uh, it gives a focus of attack. I guess you can say that. That's the word. Let me see if I can do. My arrows are not working. So my arrow game has went down by several points. So. Um, I, th I, th I think now looking at it, you know, I'm here highlighting this. Yep. This, this is good as well. Ex okay. Um, but not as good as what I see on, on, on white. So um, it's more I structured. want you to explain that. Why do you think that that's good for pretty good for black? And why do you think it's good for white? I want you to elaborate even more. All right. Cause I think that, um, like, let me start with white. Cause I think it might be easier. Uh, the pawns are protected. Uh, for example, the, the D5 pawn, yep. you got the pawn on, on E4 protecting it. So if the queen takes, obviously, as you were, the queen takes, obviously the pawn could take here. Yep. Or even if the rook takes here, so on and so forth, you know. And then even if, if for some strange reason, rook takes here and, you know, whatever, my, my, my arrows are not working. Okay. Yeah, you know, you get that I'll pawn. draw them for you. Thank Just you. <laughs> so... I mean, I, I think the pawns are protected, you know, the gaps, um, there aren't too many gaps per se. Every gap yeah. that's, that's available is, is kind of protected more or less, right? Yep. Then um, for black, uh, I think that this square here, you know, is, is kind of semi-blocked or protected from here, from anything coming that direction. But what if I, well, then, of course, the queen... So I, I don't know. I just think there's more openings into Black's pawn structure, okay. more access through it <laughs> than than with White. Um, okay. But again, that's just that's just me. That's what I see. Well, let's keep going. So right. there's also a dynamic of Bishop versus Knight. Which minor piece do you like better right now, and which do you think has more potential? The so Bishop versus Knight. Now the minor pieces, are, like you said, Bishops, Knights, and Bishops and Knights. So the minor Knights. Pieces. Okay. Yeah. All right. So which one do I like better, you said? Yep. Oh, wow. Um, good. I'm just going to visualize this for myself. <laughs> That's important. Yeah, you yeah. got no... And actually, what you're doing right now is you're highlighting where the potential next move is, but right. you're actually... You're beating me to a point that I was going to make. Oh, when okay. I talk about pieces, <laughs> right. right, and I, I often try to envision their future. Uh, I think that's very important is trying to figure out where do my pieces belong? And if I feel like they belong somewhere, how do I get them there? Right. And I'll give you just one example is if my knight, let's say my pawn on G2 went to G5 and my knight could somehow get to this F6 square, that would be amazing because you can't kick my knight out with, you don't, your bishop's on the wrong color, right? right. If my knight got to F6. Yes. So one thing that I will say is when I think about the dynamic of knight versus bishop, I tend to like the fact that the knight can go from color to color. Right. And that's, that's a big advantage a knight has over a bishop, and it can jump over pieces. Right? Right. That, those are two things. The bishop, on the other hand, has a better scope. Right. So if this bishop, say, was on the d7 square, it controls this diagonal while also controlling that diagonal. So it has just, it's, you know, consider it sort of, it's got like a sniper element to it. Right, it's long range piece. Right. And the knight is not, as you you know, we can highlight the knight can has control over squares like you know, d4, c3, f4, g3, squares like this. In this case, six squares. So I, bishop, I consider and, knight to be an ambush piece. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a that's a good way of, of framing it, honestly. And so when I ask you which piece do you like better and whose potential do you like better, well, I I, I want you to kind of Think it through here. Let's think it through together. Now, one thing I want to highlight off the bishop, like, and I think I, you touched on this, 
it's it's a, it's a light color bishop. The king right now is on a dark square. So yep. that's that's one thing I think that the bishop has against it. Okay. Um. So are you telling me that you would love to put this bishop on c5, for example? If you could switch colors, would you like to do that? Oh, yes, of course. That'd be nice. Well, I, I agree with you, actually. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it seems like that's actually something that's pretty important. And it sounds like, you know, we're joking about it, but you actually are, are raising a really interesting point that if you could switch this bishop to the dark squares, you immediately have an attack, yes. right? The, the king's immediately in check, but you also keep that king, you know, will be tucked in the corner, but it, it keeps it pushed to the side. Right. This bishop on b7 is on this blocked diagonal. <laughs> right. So it doesn't seem to have the same strength as it might have on the c5 square. So what else? You know, the long term. Let's talk long term now. Okay, long so term. short term, this bishop's blocked. Right. This knight also doesn't really have the clearest future either. Right. But let's imagine a position where queens are off the board. So just take those queens off the board, and let's talk about the minor pieces. How do you evaluate that? Queens off. So the bishop and the knight. How do you? Or actually, let's include the rooks. If the queens were just off the board. Who do you think that benefits? Let's put it that way. If the queens are off the board. I think, I think that when, I think white would have the benefit. Okay, and why? Because they have more pawns. So they I, have. I see six pawns for each side here. 